Hello, this is Andy from the Engineers Academy and in this video we're going to revisit some of the things that we've already discussed relating to sine graphs and we're also going to start to relate this to periodic functions and a periodic function is a function that repeats over time. Now where this comes into play in engineering, first of all we have AC power supplies and in an AC power supply we have a frequency of oscillation of voltages and currents. Another place we may see this is in mechanical engineering when we have frequencies of vibrations. So it does come into play in both mechanical and electrical engineering. Now what we have displayed on the screen here is the graph 1 sine 1 t, or said a different way, just sine t. Now in the top left hand corner I've indicated the function that we're graphing here and on the graph we see that function. Now we've seen these types of functions before, but we've seen them in relation to theta, the angle, or x, which is more typically used to represent a function. But what we're looking at here is we're introducing the parameter of t, or time. So you'll notice on our sign graph here that the x-axis is time rather than angle. Now hopefully you recall that when we've looked at this previously, a sine function, or sine t, will repeat every two pi radians. And the reason for that is when we work in radians, there's actually two pi radians in a full revolution. So if there's two pi radians in a circle, then one oscillation takes two pi seconds. And two pi is roughly 6.28. So some of the things that we've talked about previously is how the amplitude of these oscillations can be affected. And the way that the amplitude is affected is by changing the number in front of the sine 1t. You'll notice here that I've also included a plus zero for the phase angle. We'll discuss the phase angle in a moment. But if we change the amplitude here, let's say for example we change it to 3.5, then what we notice on our graph is that the amplitude or the peak value is going to change from one and it's going to change to 3.5. So this number in front of the sine 1t we call the amplitude and it represents the peak maximum value of our graph and if we go into the negative region we'll see that the amplitude or the magnitude of that amplitude is the same at minus 3.5. Now the other thing we talked about is how we can increase or decrease the number of waves in a given time period. So here we have a time period of 2 pi seconds. If we change the number in front of the t here Let's change it to a 2 for simplicity. Then what we notice in the same time period is we now have two full waves. So in effect we've doubled the frequency, we've doubled the number of waves per second. If we change that to 3, we'll see that we have three oscillations in the same time period. Let's return to one oscillation in the time period. Now finally we have something called the phase angle and what the phase angle changes is the starting point of our graph. So if I change that phase angle for now to 0.5 as an example, then what we see happen to our graph is that it's been shifted and it's been shifted in the negative direction. It's been shifted from right to left. We've also seen before that if this phase angle is negative, then the graph will be shifted from left to right. So it's almost a little bit counterintuitive, but if this value is positive, our graph shifts left, and if this value is negative, our graph shifts right. And we'll have a look at how this phase angle affects the time, what we call the lead or lag time, later on in the tutorial. Now the way that we can simplify things is by changing this value here, in front of the t, to a function of pi. And I have another graph to demonstrate this. Now what we have on the screen here is a similar arrangement. We have the same set of axes where we have time on the x-axis and we have our periodic function displayed. This time we have an amplitude of 7.4 so we see that our peak positive value is 7.4 and our peak negative value is minus 7.4. But what we also see is instead of having our coefficient of t or the number in front of t as just 1, now we have it as 1 pi. Well 1 pi is just pi and 
our phase angle is zero, just so we can demonstrate a couple of key points. Now the benefits of doing this, replacing the coefficient with a multiple of pi, might not be immediately apparent, but let's just have a look at the advantages of doing this. When we refer to our function, previously when the coefficient was just one, we had one full cycle every two pi seconds or every 6.28 seconds. But now what we have is we have one, two, three, and in fact we have 3.14 full cycles. Now 3.14 is pi, so what we have now is we have pi full cycles. Let's replace this with two pi then. So if we have two pi as the coefficient of t, now we have two pi full cycles. And I'll just show you this, we have one, we have two, three, four, five, six, and this part here will be 6.28 or 0.28, giving us two pi. Now still the benefits might not be immediately apparent, but let's have a look at this point here at a time of one second. What we can see now is in one second, we have one full cycle. And we're going to focus on this one second. So I'm just going to change this time axis and I'm going to change it so that it's only one second. So format axis, and I want my maximum now to be one. Okay, so now what we can see is the function 7.4 sine 2 pi t plus zero repeats every one second. And in actual fact, this coefficient or this number in front of t, 2 pi, represents something that we call the angular frequency. If we were to change this number to 4 pi, then we see some of the same rules that we've seen previously. Now, instead of one cycle every second, we now have two cycles every second. If we change that number to 8, we no longer have two cycles. Instead, we have four cycles. Now, cycles per second is a really important function in engineering. And it's something that we call the frequency. Now in the UK, the frequency of our electrical power supply is 50 hertz. And that means 50 full cycles every second. And we can represent that easily using this model by changing the number in front of our pi t to 100. So 100 pi t will give us 50 oscillations per second. I'm not going to count them. You'll just have to take my word for it that there's 50 full oscillations there. So now that we've introduced this concept of how periodic functions are affected by this number here, we can begin to relate that to some new parameters. And the parameters that we're going to be looking at are frequency, which is the number of cycles per second, periodic time, which is the time for one complete cycle, and angular frequency, which is the number of radians per second, but we can use that to calculate some of these other parameters.